Hi there! Welcome back again to the Ivory Tower Collections. In today's video, we're going to be featuring the ColecoVision. I've not had one of these on the show yet. I've worked on several, but uh, have never actually done any video footage on them before, so I thought uh, since I've got one here that's going to have several projects done to it, it might make for a good series. So, the ColecoVision. Besides being the main competitor at the time, or trying to be the main competitor at the time, to the uh, uh, Atari 2600 and the uh, Mattel and Television, which later the 5200 was released to try and combat and compete against the ColecoVision, but uh, it had a lot of cool games, a lot of uh, cool arcade conversions that were made for it at the time. But like a lot of consoles of that era, it only has just RF output initially. Um, it has kind of a tricky slider on off switch that requires frequent cleaning and maintenance. For the most part, it's a pretty robust console. This one is a uh, Canadian released version, so it features both English and French on it, as is typical of uh, North American Canadian systems. And in this particular video, what we're going to focus on first is just replacing the capacitors inside of the ColecoVision. Now, I've done lots of other capacitor replacement videos as well, but in the case of the ColecoVision, it can be a little more tricky. Again, the unit is an older unit, it's an older system, and uh, ColecoVisions especially are notorious for their traces being very fragile. So, uh, let's get to it. So what are some of the tools that we're going to require for this project today? Well, the most important tool is going to be a capacitor kit. This is an older capacitor kit that I've had on hand. Uh, I got this from console 5. But uh, yeah, so you'll obviously need the replacement capacitors. You're also going to need, potentially, some needle nose pliers. Always good to have on hand. The lovely number 2. Phillips screwdriver, also a staple uh, that's required on a lot of console work. Let's see, what else will we need? We need a toothbrush. That's to clean our work afterwards. Also, I would recommend the use of a Sharpie marker. I use silver, but I also have black ones on hand as well. Why do I use Sharpie markers? Well, I use them to mark on the main board where the uh, polarity is on the, on the uh, capacitor that I'm replacing. Additionally, you're going to need a good soldering iron to put the uh, replacement capacitors into. You'll need that. And then you're going to need a way to remove those capacitors as well. So there's a couple things you can use. I, of course, have my trusty FR300 that I've had for a couple years now that works really well for things like this. And I'm sure I'll be using it in this video as well. But uh, if you don't have access to something like that, then you're going to need something like some solder wick or solder braid, depending on how you pronounce it. And uh, just a very steady, patient hand. Now, you can also use a manual desoldering pump. I'm sure you've seen those before, those ones that uh, the cylinder type action that has a spring in it to uh, provide spring vacuum suction. That can also work. Let me get most of this cleared up real quick. And if there's any other tools I need along the way, then I'll make sure to notate them. Obviously, the other things that I didn't mention that you always want to have is obviously some good alcohol on hand for cleanup work. And uh, also you might want to use some liquid flux. So I use this from time to time. If, if for some reason my solder itself and the uh, uh, rosin core flux that's in it doesn't quite do the job. But uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for the most part. So let's crack open the ColecoVision and I'll show you how I open it up. I have the ColecoVision here and I'm ready to take it apart. It's not very difficult to take one of these apart if you know how to do it. Now, just so you're aware, the strip here along the front has three self-tapper screws that essentially hold this whole front panel facade and basically acts as an interlock between the two halves of the case itself. You can see here how it kind of overlaps between these two pieces. 
So if you were to try to do this the proper way, you would actually have to remove this foil sticker along the front, which would be kind of difficult and it might not look so pretty afterwards because the, the uh, screws are hidden underneath this. Instead, I'll show you another method that is most commonly done by most of us. It might seem a little, um, it might seem a little scary and barbaric the way it's done, but it works really well. So uh, let's get to it and I'll show you how we do this. So for starters, there are eight screws along the bottom of the ColecoVision and you're gonna need that number two Phillips to remove them. There's one located, there's one each located basically in the centers along the front, back, and both sides. And then there's also a screw located in each of the opposite corners on the back on the bottom of the unit as well. All right, I now have the screws removed. You may have noticed that I took out about half of them or so and then went ahead and tipped the console over and then removed the rest of them. That's because if you try to remove all eight and then flip it over, you might lose one or two screws in the process as they roll around and get away from you. So uh, obviously that's just, uh, you know, it's optional. Don't have to do it the way I did it, but I tend to just remove a few at a time on something this large and when they're spaced out as they are so that uh, I can keep better track of them. All right, now that that's done, let's get the console shells taken apart. Now the easiest way to do this, and again, this will look a little strange or a little uh, crazy and barbaric in the process, but just have to bear with, start by first separating the backs, the shell along the back side of the ColecoVision. Once you've done that, then along the front edge here, you need to grip along the front of the casing. Remember I said how it overlaps? And pull it forward while also pushing down on the case shell. Then start walking your way down, doing the same thing, and eventually you'll get there, and the whole thing is likely going to crack loose on you, which is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get it all apart. There we go. <laughs> like I said, it looks a little scary, but it will come separated. Sometimes you might find that you have to uh, push down on the reset button to get the cover off. In this case, I was trying to get it past a certain point to do that, but then it just came loose on me in general, so we're good to go. All right. From there, we just have the reset and the power uh, button tops. Put those off to the side somewhere secure. And then we can focus on the rest of the main guts and the removal. There's just uh, a couple more screws here that we have to worry about. Actually, a total of four. Three of them can be seen easily. The other one cannot yet, but I'll show you where they are. The first one is right here in the front on the top RF shield. The, uh, it holds down the top RF shield to the uh, main board. So we get that out. By the way, all the screws on the ColecoVision are the exact same type as the ones that were removed on the case. So uh, they're pretty much interchangeable, so you don't have to worry about uh, getting them confused or mixed up. It's still advisable to keep them separated, but just be aware that, at least in the case of the ColecoVision, all of the uh, Phillips screws inside are, uh, are universal. The other one is here in the back. There's a small indentation or a hole opening to access it. This one, because it's actually holding the main PCB itself down, and not part of the RF shield, this is where it comes in handy to have magnetic tools. Mine are just lightly magnetized so that it makes it easier to get screws out. 
And then there's one back here in the back by the RF section. And it's actually indented a little bit in the RF shield. So this one can be accessed pretty easily externally. Just kind of get in there and grab it with your fingers and there we go. Now at this point, the RF shield is almost ready to be removed. On most ColecoVisions, I've already done it on this one. I'll, I'll admit I've cheated a little bit, I apologize. But on most ColecoVisions, there is a large copper braid that runs on the inside that is attached to the very front in between the top of this RF shield and the main board and attached to the side of the RF modulator box itself internally. It's a large ground strap uh, to, uh, to just provide additional solid grounding for all of these components. As such, there is usually going to be, and again, I've already removed it on this one, or I've already loosened it, so I apologize for that, but let me uh, zoom in here a little bit. Hopefully you can see this, but right here is a section of solder that's on the main board. Originally, this solder will actually be soldered onto the main board and also be soldered onto the RF shield as well. And again, there's usually a large copper braid that actually sits in between that. So you're gonna need a soldering iron that you can adjust the heat on and you're gonna have to set it up pretty high. I usually find that I have to set it at around 425, around 415 to 425 Celsius or close to 800 degrees Fahrenheit to, uh, to build up enough heat to get that loose. Also though, you have to take care when you're using your soldering iron to loosen up that solder that you don't melt the plastic that's in front of it. So just gotta be careful when you're working on it. But once you've got that loosened up, and in fact, the easiest way to do it is while you have your iron in place and you're using it to loosen up that solder, start applying upward pressure or upward force so that you can easily and quickly remove the RF shield once that solder gives way. And at that point, you'll be left with being able to see the main board of the ColecoVision itself and ready for further disassembly. There's only one screw left at this time, and it is directly behind the center of the cartridge port. It's almost in the center of the board. It's a little low left of center, or a little low of center, but it is centered directly behind where the cartridge port is. Just one more Phillips screw. And again, it's exactly the same as the others. So there's no difference with it. At that point, you can then lift up on the board. Usually I grab from the RF modulator a little bit, and then you'll lift it up in the back and then pull it towards you or away from you so that you can get the front of the expansion connector fingers to pass through the bottom RF shield. And then we have the main board right here. And then to remove it completely, you can just remove the uh, power plug socket from the back of the plastic casing. And it's just, it just sits in here between some pieces of uh, plastic posts. That's it. Now the main board can be worked on and the rest of the system put off to the side. And that's how you disassemble a ColecoVision. Now there's not really a whole ton of capacitors on the ColecoVision board. Um, I can point out the easy ones to see right now. We've got one electrolytic here. We've got another one here. We've got two more right here. And uh, so really that's all we've got on the top part of this ColecoVision anyway, is just those four. I'm gonna straighten up these old ceramic disc capacitors. It always bothered me when I see them folded over like that. That seems like an easy enough task, right? There's just a couple. Well, that's true that we can see. The rest of them are actually hiding inside the RF modulator. And that's where it becomes a little more tricky. So let me get the cover off of this RF modulator real quick. I'm gonna set that off to the side. So here we are, we can see the inside of the RF modulator. I've turned it sideways here. And all you see is just the bottom side of a PCB. So where are these other capacitors that I'm talking about? Well, they're actually under this PCB. Yeah, they're under this. So that's why replacing the capacitors on a ColecoVision can be, um, can be fun. Because you got this RF modulator in the way and there's a couple of additional capacitors that have to come out. So how do we do that? Well, there's a couple of things you can try to do. I'll, I'll show you what I do on this to take the RF modulator out. I'm not sure if this is the approved method, but what I basically do is use my desoldering iron in this case and uh, I actually remove the RF modulator itself 
from off of the board to get to the other capacitors. Another thing that you can do, and you'll see this as I do this, although I think this is more work and uh, is a little more destructive, is you can use your desolder, you can use your, your, your uh, soldering braid, desoldering braid, or desoldering iron, or a manual pump. And what you can do is you can solder here on the top of this daughter board that's inside the RF modulator, the RF modulator board, it's actually soldered onto this outer shielding at several points, at uh, six points on here. One, two, three, four, five, six. But in order to get that off of there easily and still be able to remove the board, you still have to deal with these sections of the RF shield that have been bent inwards to hold it and kind of lock it into place. You'd have to use some needle nose pliers to kind of bend these out and shape them back outward so that you can get the board out at that point. Um, but again, that's kind of destructive and it's a lot of work. There's also another thing you need to worry about. You're going to see that there is a row of pins right here that have been soldered up through the PCB all on a line. They also are on the bottom as well, right here. And uh, that's because there is a small um, interconnect board it's made of plastic that basically has these stranded sections of wire through it that actually attaches this top board, this top PCB, to the bottom board. So that would also have to be desoldered and removed as well in order to be able to get the assembly out. Again, I usually find it easier to just desolder the RF modulator and desolder the pins from the bottom here and take it all out as a unit, as one piece. Because that's going to be the hardest part, I'm going to go ahead and work on that first. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to probably zoom in a little bit on the camera and uh, remove this RF modulator. Okay, let's see if I have enough of this undone to be able to remove the RF modulator. I'm going to very carefully use this curved tool I've got here, which is perfect for this stuff. There we go. Okay, so we only have two more capacitors or electrolytics that we've got to worry about. We've got one more here that was hiding underneath that daughter board that I spoke of. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We do have two here. Here's another one here. Let me move this out of the way. So yeah, we've got one here, we've got one here, and then on the top of that daughter board that was on the RF modulator, remember this is what we saw on top, there's another one that's hiding right here, this, this uh, blue colored one right here. And this is the uh, interconnect I was talking about that's got the, uh, the wires going through it that connects this, this uh, daughter board or this RF modulator board to the rest of the main board on the ColecoVision. So. So now that I've done that, that's the hard part for that. Now I can get the rest of these capacitors off of here and start changing them out. So, all right. So let me go ahead and uh, replace the ones on the board here first. Now, what I would recommend when you go to replace these, if you don't want to mess with this RF modulator box again, like I just did, then what I would highly advise is that when you install the replacements on this, install them on the bottom of the main board itself. There's plenty of room under this bottom of this main board between the bottom shielding to be able to lay those capacitors down flat and, uh, and solder the legs in where they need to go from the bottom side of the board. So that's what I'm gonna do on the replacements there. Additionally, I'm also, for this one here that's inside the box, this little blue guy right here that's hiding uh, in the corner, when I remove that one, I'm going to replace it as well on the top side of the board and just kind of lay it over at an angle here so that it's easier to get to in the future if it has to be replaced or serviced as well. So yeah, let me go ahead and get started on that.
That takes care of all the capacitor replacement that needed to be done on the main board itself with the two troublemakers reinstalled on the bottom side of the board. That just leaves the lone remaining capacitor inside the RF modulator box itself for now to get replaced out. And again, he's located right there. Okay, so same thing applies. I'll end up soldering it on the bottom side here. And this one's gonna be a little trickier because there's a lot of other stuff in the way here on the uh, top of the board that may have to be got to in the future. In fact, I know it will because I will also be doing a composite mod on this and I will need to solder to some points on there, but it won't be too big a deal. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get that last one removed. Here. There it is. Okay. So it'll sit just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and get some fresh solder applied. Perfect. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not, but I now have that capacitor installed in there and it's pretty much exactly flush. It is flush with the uh, with the uh, top of the arc modulator housing here. So I will be able to put the replacement top on it with no problem. And again, I've just, you know, soldered the positive lead on a uh, on the, next to the uh, to another component's leg that's popping through here. It's all on the same trace, so it's no problem. So now all that's left to do is just to uh, solder this RF modulator back onto the rest of the ColecoVision mainboard, put it back together enough to test it and make sure it's working. Be right back. Okay. I've now got the RF modulator almost back in place. What I'm going to do now is just kind of clean up some more work here that I've done where I applied some fresh flux. And then what I'll need to do is I'll need to turn the temperature up on my iron to solder in the rest of the RF modulator. Be turning it up to about 450 at this point just to make sure that I've got got it in place where I need it to. Now this part's going to be a little trickier. It's going to want to fight me when I try to do this. Okay. Make sure that's sitting flush on the board. I think it is. We're looking pretty good there. And we'll get these others on. And then one last final cleanup. Also helps to cool the board down a little bit too. We're looking pretty good. Our modulator is back in place where it needs to be. And again, with that capacitor laying down as flat as it is, we should be able to uh, put the top back on without any problems. Yeah, just like that. Sorry for my fingerprints on the shielding, but that's back on, nice and smooth. Cool. I'm now gonna throw this thing back in and we're gonna give it a quick test, make sure it's still working. Okay, so real quick, I've got it put back into the bottom shell here for isolation. I've got my RF cable connected up here to my flat panel. Got a controller in it and my multi-cart and the giant power brick as well. So let's see if how we're doing. We have power. And uh, 
There we are, got my menu. Looking good.